Hi everyone, welcome back to Stitchy B. I'm Cheryl Temple. Okay, this week I'm talking about how I decided which brand new sewing machine to buy. So I was quite excited to decide, well, I think it's about time I had a new sewing machine that gave me a few more options than the ones I currently have. So at the moment, um, I have this machine behind me here, which is a Singer 191D. And I think it was made in the 1970s. So it's what we call in the UK as an industrial sewing machine, which is mainly used in a commercial environment. It's not built for home use, really. It's huge. Um, it takes up loads of space. It's so heavy, you wouldn't believe. The actual head is really heavy. It's really difficult to lift. So when I have it serviced, um, you kind of pop the lid off and um, just take the top um, top part to be serviced and then underneath you've got a motor um, and a knee lifter here but it's um, it's quite simple it's got a straight stitch only and it reverses so you can tie off your stitches and that's it so every time I need to use a zigzag or a buttonhole I use my other machine which is a Toyota and this is a pretty basic machine. It's got a few stitches on there. It's got a buttonhole facility and also one or two different um, decorative stitches, but nothing too um, amazing really. And it's served me well. So. It wasn't particularly expensive. Um, I think it was from Argos or somewhere like that um, for maybe around the hundred pound mark. And it's been great. Um, it's quite reliable. Um, but I wanted something that was a little bit more professional with a few um, options um, that was going to give me a better finish on the clothes that I'm sewing, seeing as I sew so often anyway. So I wanted to find out and do some research where I could get a sewing machine from. I wanted to know what I needed first because I hadn't got a clue because these are all pretty basic um, apart from these I use an, a basic overlocker as well and that's it so I didn't want something too fancy that I was going to pay for and not use so I asked a few of you guys and I asked a few friends and also I have joined recently joined the fold line Facebook group which is a fantastic resource if you ever need any sewing tips or hints and also it's nice to look at what other people are sewing as well so um, I'll pop a link to that in the description below so I asked the group um, what they sew on and I got lots of different answers um, lots of people recommended their own favorites as you can can imagine it ranged from um, really quite reasonably priced to mega expensive and um, I wanted something in the middle I, I didn't want to spend too much money so um, the main themes that came up were uh, the Janome machine was recommended I think so over at use one to teach on in their classes um, had a quick look on their website um, and I, I read all the reviews as well on Amazon so that was useful too um, and I thought that wasn't quite right for me. I wanted something a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more like what I'm used to. Um, lots of people recommended Juki, the Juki brand, um, and that looked great. Um, but also I've been sewing a lot of jersey recently, so I wanted something that would give me an opportunity to not stretch out the hems and maybe to have a walking foot or even better, a function that would sew jersey without using a different foot. So, da, da, da. this is a FAF Ambition Essential and it comes with a hard plastic case, if I can learn to get it off for you without clattering about. And this is funny actually because I've seen this all over Instagram recently since I've bought it. I think somebody's running a competition to win one. So um, yeah, it's quite good. So here it is. Now, the reason I chose this one was, and um, it was mid price range. Um, so I think it was originally around the 600 pounds, just over 600 pounds mark. And that's a lot of money for me to spend. So it was a really considered buy this um, and I still thought it was too much but I, I'll come on to that. So in terms of features there are a load of different stitches so I know after I've said 
I don't want loads of things I'm not going to use. This so happens to come with a load of things I'm not going to use. Um, but the main reason I bought this was A, it's FAF and it's a good German engineering brand and they're known for being really sturdy and reliable and the reviews were excellent. I looked at a lot of videos on YouTube as well from companies who demonstrate them and it just looked, it just felt right. Um, but yeah, the main reason is this machine comes with something called an IDT, which is a little, I can't really show you there, so I'll film this separately. Um, it comes with a little foot at the back that when you click on to the presser foot, it actually drags your fabric through. So it behaves in a way like a walking foot. So that was brilliant because I thought all I've got to do is just click that on and I'm away so in Jersey and I'm not worrying about the hems and anything being stretched. So that was a real winner for me in the features list. And um, also as well, um, amongst the decorative stitches, sorry I'm blinding you a bit there aren't I, um, there are little nice touches. So you, there's an alphabet so I could actually stitch my name or stitch Stitchy B into the things that I'm sewing which I thought was a nice touch. I'm not going to use that loads and it wasn't the reason I bought it but I thought yeah that, that's quite cute and there are lots of different decorative stitches um, that I'd like to add on jeans pockets so in my make nine I've got a couple of pairs of jeans to make and I was wondering how I'd approach the top stitching and I thought that will make it so much easier. I think there's a little star motif and a little heart motif um, so I thought that would be quite nice and there's a few different florals and flowers. I'll pop some images up so you can have a, a peek at what else it does. Um, and also you're able to sew, like most machines, um, you can sew a twin needle um, and also it's got the usual um, tension adjusters and also it's digital as well which I'm not always a fan of when I buy washing machines I'm like I just want basic knobs to turn and a button to push I don't need all the digital displays but this so happens to be digital which is nice but it does make it a little bit more complicated so as soon as I got it um, I opened the manual that comes with it and made sure I understood the basics. I'm still getting to know um, but I wanted to be able to sew um, as soon as possible without having to <laughs> to study a degree and, and it's fine for that. The instructions are really well laid out, really simple and they're British in, in English as well um, So and you haven't got lots of different um, languages to sift through to get to yours so I think it's aimed at this specific market and I imagine it would be the same in your country as well. So yeah I'm really overjoyed with it. Um, I made the skirt that I sewed last week um, on here and it was lovely. The only thing I couldn't do was the invisible zip I had to revert back to my Toyota machine um, to do that because I have the right foot for that. So I've been online and I've ordered um, a set of additional feet for this. Now it does come with quite a few additional feet already so you get a little bag and um, there are needles in there, there's seam, ripper, um, there's all manner of different feet but there just wasn't there's a zipper foot already but there wasn't an invisible zipper foot so I've ordered um, a special set of those from Amazon now this machine because it has the IDT technology it doesn't fit universal feet so stupidly last week I ordered a set and they didn't fit so I've returned those so that was a learning so if you do sew with one um, with this IDT function you need a specific type of foot for it so you need to get the FAF model correct and make sure you order them in that way. Okay so where did I end up buying it from? Well I bought this from Sewing Machines Direct um, and I think their URL is sewingmachines.co.uk I'll pop all links to these in the description below um, and it's a UK based company and um, all the prices um, 
for these were the same across the web. So I looked at their competitors, I looked um, on Amazon, I read all the reviews on Amazon, which was really helpful. And then I noticed Sew Machines Direct. So um, having had those recommended a few times, I gave them a call because when you go onto their website, it says call us to see if there's a special offer on the model that you're interested in. So I thought, okay, I'll give it a go. I'm sure there won't be, but I'll ring up and see what happens. So I phoned and I spoke to a lady and um, I said, I'm interested in buying the FAF Ambition Essential. And it's currently, I think it was 619 uh, advertised on their site. And do you have any special offers on it? And she said, oh, do you know, we do. And she gave me a discount code and I keyed it in and I saved over a hundred pounds, which I thought, blimey, this is amazing. So not only did I get the machine that I wanted, I saved over a hundred pounds on it as well. Um, it arrived the next day, which is always a bonus. And I think it was a time delivery slot as well. Um, yeah, it was, which was even better because you know you can follow the, the delivery guy on the, the DPD website and away, away he came um, with my machine. And when I opened it, I really didn't expect anything else. I got a whole set of um, scissors, which okay, they're not gonna be you know high class dressmaking scissors, but scissors are always useful, aren't they? And, and they also sent me a full set of these Frister and Rothman threads in all different colours for free. So I was completely blown away by this stage. And I'm a real stickler for customer service, as you might guess if you bought from me. I'm really passionate about really treating your customer well. And I never expect it myself in return. So when it happens, I'm always blown away. So it's completely overjoyed with this. It's a perfect machine. It's absolutely brilliant. I've got all these goodies. I've got next day delivery and I saved over a hundred quid. So I couldn't be happier to be honest. And um, I didn't mention to them by the way that I was gonna talk about this machine on, on here. Um, and I'm in no way affiliated with them. I'm just chuffed a bit. <laughs> so what I did do was, and um, I rang them and thanked them. And I, I said, I will be doing a review um, about the machine um, on my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to give my followers a discount, I'd be really grateful. So um, what they've said is they're building a new website at the moment that will take all kinds of different discount codes and so on. But they said, if you call up, and mention Stitchy B to get your discount, they will give you the best possible discount on the model that you're interested in. So have a look. I've already been browsing their cover stitch machines and oh my goodness, you can save an absolute fortune buying from them. So don't buy any machines until you've at least looked and phoned them and asked what their best prices are. So I can't recommend them highly enough and they're absolutely fantastic. So yeah, there you go. There's my new little baby. I almost forgot to tell you what I was wearing. Um, so I've made another Linden sweatshirt. Um, I know, I just love them. You know, when you find a pattern and it's easy to make up, isn't it? When you, you're used to the sizing. So yeah, this is a Linden. I lengthen the sleeves by an inch or two. I can't remember how much, but uh, I always have to because I'm like an albatross. <laughs> and um, I use this fab reversible, um, jersey. I was going to say sweatshirt fabric but it's not quite as thick as a sweatshirt fabric. It's um, it's like a cottony, if you imagine a pontaroma that's cottony, it's really quite like that. I think it's about a 60% cotton content this. I'll, I'll double check that. It's on, on the site correctly for you. And I used the reverse of it to make the cuffs in the different direction. I was going to make the neckband in that direction too but I forgot. <laughs> so I've also done the um, the band at the bottom. So I think it looks quite nice. Uh, and of course I made the stripes go down that way. So it's quite good to play with pattern, isn't it? Sometimes it just adds those little touches that I think make it look a bit less homemade. It probably still looks homemade on me anyway, doesn't it? But it's nice to add the detail. So yeah, I've got some more of this in as well. Um, as luck should have it, some arrived this morning, thank goodness. So if you do want some, there's a few meters left. Um, last week I mentioned that I, at the end of my videos, um, each week I'll be talking about 
a different type of fabric and um, because I think it's useful when you're buying fabric online it's difficult isn't it to get an idea as to how it behaves what it feels like how thick it is and so on and I thought it might be helpful if I showed you up close at one of mine so this week I'm talking about velour now this is a beautiful champagne coloured and um, this is a really high quality velour now velour is a type of velvet so usually velour is very slinky rather than the velvet that your grandma's curtains might be made from type of thing so if you've ever made a velvet cushion or curtains or um, furnishing fabrics and seen how that behaves it's very thick isn't it and very um, kind of stiff um, I'll show you some actually I've got some here that's a vintage piece so this is a typical furnishing velvet. So this is a, a vintage piece of fabric from, um, probably from curtains, I imagine, once upon a time. My mum-in-law buys me these. She goes to antique fairs and um, she's always on the lookout for interesting fabrics for me. So I've got a really big collection of things like this and one day I'll turn them into something interesting. Um, but yeah, so this is a velvet. Now you wouldn't wear this. I mean, you could, you could make a really basic skirt with it and, and just about get away with it, or maybe even a coat. Um, it would probably work really nicely as a coat, uh, but it, they do tend to, with, with furnishing velvets, they pick up all the little bits, don't they, a fluff? So they're not the easiest things to wear. Um, so yeah, this is a furnishing velvet and you can see it, it's a little bit stiff I mean it looks quite nice on screen doesn't it but it's a little bit stiff and you wouldn't really want to wear it um, kind of on your arms or next to your skin whereas velour is firstly it's really stretchy um, I think it's stretchy in all the directions yes I think it's got a four-way stretch this fabric um, but this is the type of thing that you could make a cowl neck top from or a cowl neck dress or a cowl back dress I'm gonna do that one day um, and I made a lovely lounge suit just before Christmas you may have seen the video from some floral velour and do you know what I've lived in that since then um, I made some leggings from a leggings pattern and also a linden top um, in the same fabric and it's been absolutely brilliant and I wasn't sure how I'd feel wearing this because it's a mostly a polyester fabric and I thought is it going to be too warm is it going to be sweaty and it's neither it's just right um, you wouldn't want to wear it in the summer I think it would be warm um, but it's just right for this kind of transitional season moving into to spring so yeah um, also you've got to be careful about the pile so um, if you look you can feel which direction it goes in so it, if it's in the if it's going the right way the pile should go down and feel smooth if you run your hand up the other way it starts to go against the grain if you know so it's one thing to bear in mind when you're placing your pattern pieces because um, it the colour will change depending on which way up it is and I found that I actually made my waistband on the linden with um, the nap it's called the nap going the different direction and it's it's fine but to do it properly make sure that each piece especially with a waistband or a cuff where you fold them and manipulate them that way it's easy to, to miss that which I did so yeah that's for law um, I've also um, got some of the black um, floral velour left which has been really popular and this is uh, the, the printed velour um, which I, I made it in the navy which is gone but there's a little bit of the black left and you can see it's just a lovely lightish weight fabric um, you could make sweatshirts from it leggings um, even a hoodie um, or, or a lovely dress if you choose a really simple dress pattern um, they're really quite easy to to sew up and because it's stretch the fitting requires um, a lot less than a woven and because it tends to fit your body I know um, Tilly in the buttons has got her she's got a lovely book out stretch hasn't she and she's made a beautiful Joni dress in a 
a similar, I think she's chosen a, a royal or a navy blue velour and that looks gorgeous. So this would work really nice on one of those kind of patterns where you've got a, a nice twisty um, knot at the front. So yeah, that's this week's closer look at fabric. Okay, that's it from me for this week. Um, next week, I'm gonna make something from Tilly's new book, Stretch. And I think I might make the baseball t-shirt. Um, and I've got some amazing t-shirt fabric to sew that in. Um, so I'll be here then, hopefully showing you that and the fabrics to go with it. Um, so next week, it makes sense to talk about Jersey um, at the same time, so we'll do that. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a lovely Easter and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye for now.